How to be happy. Everyone, everywhere is always searching for happiness. But what is happiness and how do we get it? People go about trying to get happiness in various ways. People will even take unhealthy routes to get to happiness. But what's a healthy way to be happy? What do you need to do to be happy? First off, don't be afraid to do the things that make you happy. Sometimes I find myself keeping myself from doing something that I know will make me happy because I'm living in this fear that something bad's gonna happen afterwards. <laughs> I think there's actually a word for that condition. Over the past couple years of something I've been working against. Sometimes it's just anxiety holding you back from doing something that could actually help with the anxiety. But this video isn't about anxiety, it's about happiness. So doing the things that you know will make you happy starts with figuring out what does make you happy. Examples include indulging your creative side, like painting, going through Pinterest. Something sometimes people don't think of is volunteering. One of the easiest ways to get joy is helping others and seeing them happy. When you go to volunteer, you'll come across people who, that's where I've met some of the kindest people I've ever come across, or at least people who are currently in a state of kindness. Everyone can be mean sometimes, everyone can be nice sometimes, but when people are volunteering, they're really happy really proud of themselves and really friendly. So go volunteer. Next, I would recommend spending time with your friends. This doesn't matter how many friends you have. And don't feel bad if they're busy. It's not any fault of your own. And if you don't have any good friends you can go to, don't be afraid to go look for them. My freshman year of college, I moved in a little earlier than everybody else and my roommate hadn't come yet. So I was basically just alone in my room for a couple days. And the moment people started moving in, I just felt like I needed a friend because we had some time before school was going to start. So I literally walked out into the hallway hoping to run into someone. And I did. That's how I made my first friend. And I still have that friend. So take just one moment of courage and go and randomly try to make a friend. Offer your name, ask what grade they're in, put yourself out there. Another example is accomplishing a goal. Accomplishing a goal can make you very happy. You know, you've set this goal, you prepared for it, and you did it. Just writing down a list of goals is even useful. And as you accomplish them, checking them off is really nice. You can set small goals even just for the day. Another thing that will make you happy is finding someone's or your own dog or cat and petting that animal. There's actually some study that says listening to a cat's purring will actually reduce your anxiety and make you happier. Another thing that stems from my fear that I sometimes have of being happy is that I feel like I need to save things for their ideal happy moment. Sometimes I won't want to wear something in my closet because it's cute and I want to wear it on a day when I'm in class longer or I like efficiency so it's like I want to wear the cuteness in proportion to how long my day is. But instead of worrying about that and not enjoying it at that moment and then putting your happiness off, just go ahead and wear the outfit. Don't be afraid to be cute. <laughs> wear things that make you happy. This could be cute outfits, comfy clothes, random part of your wardrobe that makes you happy. Like my socks. <laughs> this is my dog. And I wore this happy marigold colored day. Sparks positivity, because you know yellow colors tend to make me think of happiness. The last thing I'll mention for doing things that make you happy and not being afraid is to be nice and friendly and smile at people. In this society, we feel so awkward smiling at random strangers when we cross by. Instead, you like completely avoid eye contact or you make that awkward like accidental eye contact or you're timing it right with as they're walking, in which I never time that right, actually. I like, I like to look when people are like a little distance away, but then like they won't be looking and then once we get about here, they'll look and I won't be looking and it's, it's really awkward. But just putting in your head that people are nice. Everyone has a nice side to them and just when you walk by someone, smile at them. A good amount of the time people will smile back and you might even make their day. Smiling, even when you're not happy, releases endorphins and can make you a bit happier. And being friendly in general makes you happy and makes others happy and makes others more inclined to make you happy. If you're friendly to someone, they are more inclined to be friendly to you. And a positive atmosphere is a happy atmosphere. Secondly, I would like to talk about taking care of your physical health and the importance of that on your happiness. 
First off, I think it is extremely important to get a regular sleep routine. Having a sleep schedule will change your life. You might be someone with insomnia or a certain sleeping condition, and that will require different methods than I'm going to recommend. A lot of us will just have these inconsistent sleep routines, stay up late watching Netflix, you know, we all do it. <laughs> but seriously, keeping a sleep routine makes you so much happier. When you have a sleep schedule, you're more likely to wake up on time, wake up feeling more awake, and have a more positive start to your day. Getting the right amount of sleep just makes you happy. Also, it's great to keep up exercise. Exercise is great for your body, and when your body is happy, you get happier. Just like feeling your posture improved after you've exercised when you walk around during the day is actually really makes me happy. And working in conjunction with your body, not against your body, is a great thing to do. You should exercise at least once a week. The ideal, of course, is three times a week or more. But if you're getting it in once a week, you'll start seeing how that affects you and hopefully start doing it more. This ties into practicing yoga or stretching and mental rest. Yoga is great about going through this nice little cycle of stretching yourself out. Depending on the yoga you do, you could do some legit like ex hardcore exercise, even cardio. But what's great is you end with something like Shavasana, which is basically just laying flat on your back and relaxing and meditating. It gives your brain a healthy break and all your muscles relax. So that's a great way to make you happy. Also, it's great to try to eat a balanced diet. When you're missing certain nutrients from your diet, it actually affects your mental health. And with this, be sure to drink a lot of water. This is great for your happiness, for your skin, for your health, for a lot of things. Drink your water. And lastly, for this section, take pride in your hygiene. One of the symptoms of depression is not taking care of yourself. So I would recommend, no matter how you're feeling, to just try to put an effort in your hygiene. Taking showers at least once a week, putting on deodorant, washing your face. Washing your face can be so relaxing. It's just like you clean everything off. Think about those things every day and it'll make you happier. Section three is moving past physical health into mental health, which of course has a direct connection to your happiness. Overarchingly, I think it is important to focus on positivity and optimism. Go about your day and when you catch yourself with something negative in your head, try to think of something that'll counteract that that's positive. It's not naive to be optimistic, as long as you're keeping it in perspective. Having optimism and thinking about the good things in life is a happy thing to do. With perspective in mind, it's very important to foster a healthy perspective of life, challenges, people, and yourself. Ride the waves of life. When you're down, realize that you can get back up again. It'll happen at some point. So have hope. When you're going through challenges, remember that quote about how failure is the best teacher and failure helps you get progress. And your perspective of people is also very important. It's not healthy to think about people as they walk by as judging you, being mean, glaring. And sometimes they're just sitting there not really thinking about much. I know it's hard to like listen to. I hate when people tell me that, but it's so true. If you don't like someone, there's probably something in them that you will like. There's something in everyone that you can find that you like. Give people a chance and it, seeing the positive side of each person you come across is a cool thing to see. Someone could be a beautiful dancer, someone else could be extremely kind, someone else could be funny, and someone else could be great at giving you perspective. Being open to learning about people gives you more perspective of life. They will share their perspectives with you. Keep in mind that there is always someone better or worse off than you. I know you've heard it, but it's true. So be happy with you. Learn to move on from your regrets, from your embarrassments, and from your pride. Don't live in regret. Learn your lesson, move on. That's it. If you don't know who you are, try focusing on other people. They might be able to show you who you are, or directly tell you. Seek out positive people to be around. If you surround yourself with negative people, you're gonna feel pretty negative. Though I understand it can be hard sometimes to find positive people, but not everyone's gonna be positive all the time. Lastly, I'd like to say that 
you might come to a point where you need to accept the fact that you might need a counselor and that the first one you see might not be the right counselor for you. Some people have to go on journeys talking to different counselors to find the right click of someone they feel they, they can talk to and that is actually helping them in return. Another thing that is great for your mental health is getting things done and taking breaks. My freshman year of college, I heard of this method called the Pomodoro method. Pomodoro is the Italian word for tomato. So it's the tomato method. I think it was based off that little tomato kitchen timer. In this Pomodoro technique, you have your task and you set a timer for 25 minutes during which you do your task. After 25 minutes, you can take a 5 minute break, which adds up to 30 minutes. The fourth time you do this, you take a 15 minute to 30 minute break. And then you can repeat the whole procedure depending on how much time you're spending. My freshman year, I had one of those bunk beds where the bed's at the top and the desk is at the bottom. And I did the Pomodoro technique. I'd spend 25 minutes on my desk and then I would climb up the ladder to my bunk bed and lay down and play on my phone for five minutes and then I'd climb back down. So I would literally separate my work and rest spaces. In this fourth and last part, tidying and nourishing your life. You've probably heard of Marie Kondo of late. The main message she gets across for cleaning is sparking joy in items and joy is happiness, so cleaning is a great therapy. When you're cleaning, you feel like you're getting something done, and there's the potential to find things that bring you happiness that you didn't realize you still had, and just remind you of happy memories. Not to mention, I like to use cleaning now as a form of positive procrastination. So I'll be procrastinating what I'm supposed to be doing, but at least I'm doing something positive, <laughs> and that's a happy way to think about it. <laughs> also, consider taking a tech hiatus. Technology surrounds our lives. It can help you and it can hurt you. Sometimes you find yourself in a four hour long rolling through some social media or watch of Netflix, YouTube. You feel like you've wasted so much time on your phone or a computer. Taking a tech hiatus helps you to disconnect from that and remember what life is actually like. I'm hoping to do a tech hiatus video soon because I have a serious addiction to technology. I have taken a break from technology once in my life, which was actually a middle school class assignment where for one week we were not allowed to use technology and we wrote about how we felt each day. So tell me if you want to see that. Other ways to nourish your life include inspiring yourself through books, and watching things like TED Talks and podcasts really contribute to your view of the world. And a lot of them are about happiness and positivity, like this video. Another way to nourish your life is to go on trips. You might not be able to go very far, but just going to the park or a coffee shop or the library gives your mind a change of scenery and a view that life is going on around you and you should be part of it. Bribe yourself to get out of bed. Give yourself something to look forward to in the morning. Plan to have a nice breakfast. Tell yourself you're gonna sing your favorite song in the shower or that later on in the day you're going to do something fun. Don't be afraid to pursue your interests. Even if they're temporary, make time for them. At the moment, you might not be very interested in the part of your life that you're having to put a lot of focus into. However, there's always time to find. Just add it on to what you're already doing and don't feel like it's a burden. To end this off, I'm just going to read some quotes that I find inspiring and that give me a good perspective on life and can lead me towards feeling happy. The first one's actually right on. Believe when you are most unhappy that there is something for you to do in the world. So long as you can sweeten another's pain, life is not in vain. Helen Keller. When I was young, I used to admire intelligent people. As I grow older, I admire kind people. That's unknown. Trying times are not the times to stop trying. Also unknown. Attitude is the difference between an ordeal and an adventure. Also unknown. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Be successful anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest anyway. 
What you spend years building, someone could destroy. Build, anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy, anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good, anyway. Give the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give the best you've got, anyway. In the final analysis, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them, anyway. Mother Teresa We can complain because rose bushes have thorns, or rejoice because thorn bushes have roses. Abraham Lincoln Forgiveness is not an occasional act, it is a constant attitude. Martin Luther King Jr. The best way to cheer yourself up is to cheer someone else up. Mark Twain Anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it is stored than to anything on which it is poured. Mark Twain That was either Mark Twain or Aristotle. I feel like I've seen it quoted from both of them, so... The tallest oak in the forest was once just a little nut that held its ground. Unknown. I hope this video has brought you some happiness today and given you ideas for ways you can encourage yourself to be happy in everyday life. See you again soon.